Hello, everybody. Uh, Scott Roberts is here today with Mike Beeler. Uh, Mike is the son of the founder of Astronomics and has been running the company for quite some time. You, Mike, you started with the company like when you were a little boy, right? Uh, yeah, when I was seven years old. So <clears throat> originally, my dad had an advertising agency and he thought the best way to save on expenses was to buy a duplex. So we lived in one side of it. The advertising agency was on the other side of it. Okay. And in the course of his advertising agency, he had um, worked for stereo stores. Okay. And he thought, he thought it'd be a great idea to get uh, people to come into their store by putting a telescope in their window just as an eye catch as they walk up and down up and down the sidewalks. And it was an even better idea because at the time, whenever you bought five of them, you got one free. So he's like, wow. I'm gonna talk five of my buddies into buying these refractors on Altazimuth mounts and I'm gonna get one for free. I get one for me. <laughs> That's right. And uh, it took him about five minutes to talk him into buying it. He's like, well, this is great. I can't yeah, believe good, that this worked. He was a great salesman, too, and a great market. Yeah, guy, right? yeah. And uh, we loaded up the car. He took $10,000 in cash uh, to Celestron, went down, looked at the facility, signed up as a dealer, came back, got our first inventory in. And my job when I was seven, we had the index cards on these files that pulled out of this giant metal drawer and my job was to write ones or zeros as we got in inventory and sold inventory on all these little cards. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, so you had a real job, you know, I had a, seven I had years a old. real job at seven years old. Jeez. OK. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I also wanted to go to work when I was seven, but uh, because I hated my school teacher in second grade. And so I demanded that you know, I, I would stay home and they go, no, you can't stay home. You got to go get a job. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get a job at seven years old, <laughs> so, but I did the next year at eight years old. There you That's, go. I, I think that builds character to start work uh, at a, such a young age. You learned a lot about responsibility. Uh, my dad thought so too. And I thought it was great that he was just next door. I mean, I would come home from school and then go in, get my snack, walk across the way, say hi to my dad, go to my little desk and start doing ones and zeros. And, and that was it. I mean, the first year we only, we only sold uh, $9,000 worth of goods. Wow. Uh, and the first year was six months anyways, because we started in July. Okay. Uh, so, but I mean, it was still, we had kept all our inventory in a, what was a 10 by 10 bedroom in the back of this duplex. All our inventory was in there. Wow. The other bedroom was his recording studio. So he could do his ads uh, for people for the radio. And, and then his desk was in the living room. <laughs> so. Astronomics really get started from uh, your home. Right. And, uh, yep. but was it called astronomics at that time? Originally. So his company was ad libs advertising Inc. I see. So he he decided I'm going to call it Ad Libs Astronomics, which it's the whole I'm in advertising. I need the A's, triple A painting, double A. But he's like, so I want all these A's. So when people go to my ad, I'm at the top. Right. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, and that yeah. was it. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad strategy. Not a bad well, strategy. no, considering Google was paper at that point in time, that was uh, you'd always get the number one search ranking. <laughs> <laughs> with the name that starts yeah, with A. So. <laughs> so your dad had, he was a futurist, you know, that, that yes. Was, so, um, yeah. but, uh, let me, uh, let me take off my, my, I, I still had a counter up there <laughs> right over my eyes, which actually looked good because <laughs> it looked like I had sunglasses on. Um, uh, that, well, that's a lot of story I didn't know. You know, I, I, uh, uh, first met your dad, probably about 1980 or 81. Sure. Uh, he came to uh, one of the Celestron events. Celestron used to have these big soirees where they invited in all the dealers and they would go to places like the Queen Mary, for example, and, and mm -hmm. London Charter. 
uh, and we'd have a nice dinner and then they would do the dog and pony show and show us the new lineup of telescopes and stuff, which was really cool. Um, uh, I was uh, just starting in, in the industry at that time, working in a little camera shop called o Oceanside Photographic Center. And uh, your dad uh, was holding court uh, with uh, the uh, other uh, retailers there. He, he, had, he was at odds with uh, some of the mail order practices that were going on at that time, you know. So, sure. Uh, <laughs> never one to shirk away or to, it was not a shrinking violet. Um. No, 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 but, the, um, the Jersey, the Jersey would come out very quickly at yes. that point in time. The East Coast rage, as he used to call it. So that was, <laughs> that was him. I mean, when he, when you grow up in your, uh, you know, his dad worked in a, a steel mill, so he was very blue collar. Okay. Uh, ended up being an executive in USX Steel, but he would come home, prop his feet up, drink a beer, wait for uh, his uh, his wife to bring dinner, and it was that you know the kind of Archie Bunker lifestyle. So he was, my dad was very passionate about it, and sometimes it came across as a little angry. Uh, but for the most part, he, he had his convictions and he knew what he wanted to believe in. And he, he wanted it just to be fair. He just always wanted a level playing field sure. as much as possible. Sure. So, yeah. And, and he, he was very fair, fair to deal with. I, you and I were talking earlier before, before this, and I was relating to you, uh, uh, when I was working at Mead, it was not uncommon. We had, a, there was a period of time where it was not uncommon for, me to double or triple ship a dealer. Okay. So, and this happened many times with astronomics. Uh, one of the things that uh, immediately gained all of our respect for your father and for the astronomics business was the fact that we could make a mistake. Uh, we would offer to take back the extra merchandise that we had shipped. Okay. Um, and your dad would always say, no, I just wanted you to know that, that you double and triple ship me. I'm sing sending you a check. Even though he had terms, he could pay on terms. He would just send a check and pay for everything all at once. You know, so um, we loved your dad and, and astronomics from that respect. Uh, but uh, I got to know him, too, on a personal level. He had, he had, he had a great sense of humor. Uh, uh, he was... Uh, also interested in, I think, in space exploration because right. I found out he had a, like this huge meteorite collection, which a lot of people don't know. I I have. He okay, so he started collecting in the late nineties. My mother never really knew how many meteorites he actually had on hand. Uh, <laughs> If she ever watches this, she will know now. Yeah. Um, he he cataloged, he literally finished photographing and cataloging them a week before he passed away. Wow. And I have 1,800 meteorites of various sizes here that he had set aside specifically to be sold so my uh, to go to my kids' college educations. Yeah. So I've got, I mean, boxes and yeah. He's got them all in baggies and labeled and cross-referenced with photos. And there's a giant word doc with how he got them, how much he paid, how much there were. I mean, it is it is massive. Wow, it is massive. You you, I I think that uh, you know there's a lot of collectors out there. I I believe I when I talked to him, I I had seen my first palisite. Uh, mm -hmm. um, it was a big piece and it was sure. just remarkable. And, 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 uh, your dad was saying, Oh yeah, I've, I've, I've got that and I've got this and I've got this and I got that, you know, and I was like, really, <laughs> you know, so, um, uh, but, uh, he never talked about it before. And so there's, there's probably more about your father that we can learn in the future, but, um, yeah. um, Let's let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the the company. It's it it's it's forty one years old. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's um, correct. So it's gone through a lot of transitional uh, times, <laughs> right? I mean, you you he he does extremely well in in, in traditional mail order. Uh, yes. 
He develops a reputation. You guys develop a reputation for being uh, having expert knowledge, uh, for rapid delivery, uh, taking care of the customer every time. You know, no matter what. I mean, it was it wasn't ever a situation where you know you had this tug of war with the manufacturer who might be more forthcoming or not as forthcoming uh, to deal with something. But you guys were always there for your customer every time. Um, so companies like yours get that the customer is really the boss, okay? Um, uh, but what were the, what do you remember as the challenges? Because you, you, as a kid, you watched this whole thing. Uh, sure. Evolve. I mean, so the first challenge we actually had was my dad's decision on buildings to put the place in. Because he was... Even though we were a telescope company, he still thought that he was an advertising agency. So he kept going to these office buildings. So I've got, you know, 30 LX200s and 20 Celestar 8s shoved in a 10 by 10 room that I'm having to unload in a parking lot on a truck and haul through hallways. Oh. So. I, whenever you triple ship me, that was the worst summer of my life because I had to move all those things through all these little narrow hallways. Oh my God. Um, and then Haley's Comet came. Yeah. Sales went boom. I mean, the biggest explosion in the astronomical community, period. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, they fell off 80% across the industry. Oh, yeah. I, and that so, was, I mean, it was. That was in retail was at that time. And I remember that. You couldn't I sell mean, a telescope to save your soul after Alex yeah. Summit. So. so that was our own depression that that the industry slogged through. And then it started making its way back up again with the introduction of computerized telescopes, the LX200. Because I know the CompuStars and that sort of thing, but no one had had produced them the way that, that Meade finally figured out. And then the ETX90s. And then my dad realized we need a building. So, yay, we got our own building built with a warehouse and all that good jazz. Um, is that the building you're in right now? That's the building we're in right now okay. that we moved back to because we built another building. We refurbished a 13,000-square-foot building in downtown Norman. Um, the city of Norman decided they wanted it after we were done with it for okay. some of their program so we sold it to them we moved back to our original building beautiful building that was downtown yeah oh it was awesome yeah i mean it was great yeah um so our space was figured out now the biggest problem we've had is the transition from paper media which my dad was was king of into the digital format of google and yeah. and advertising that way um we tried to be on the forefront of that whenever we bought Cloudy Nights. That was my thought and my transition because I'm like, people are going to start moving this direction. We need to support this industry in a way to support it outside of give me your money. Right. You know, we needed to, to foster education as yeah. best as we could. And going out on the corner at, you know, 10 o'clock at night on Main Street's nice, but I'll see, you know, a hundred people, yeah. you know, cloudy nights. Now, you know, we see, I, 200 and 200 million a year. I mean, so it's a million a year, a year, a year goes through there. that. That's how many wow. visitors wow, wow, wow. that we end up having. Yes. At that's least an incredible amount of outreach. Now, you know, I, I think that, um, I think that, so this was your idea to bring in cloudy nights, correct? Uh, yeah, Alistair St. Clair had started it as a review site, and it was just him working in his uh, home office typing up, I have this Dobsonian, this is what I like about it. He he viewed it almost like a consumer reports sort of entity. I see. Because uh, he didn't take any uh, advertising when it started. He didn't allow samples. He would just go out and buy random things from people and set them up and write about them. Uh, okay. And then he would start taking in other reviewers who did the same sort of thing. His review site grew. Yes. So then he had to start taking small ads. Uh, he still wouldn't to support review the because yeah to help support it. yeah because he needed he needed a little river revenue. space <laughs> yeah exactly right uh, 
And then after about four years, he decided to add a forum. And that's when he couldn't afford the website anymore. Oh, He could not out of pocket afford to pay the monthly fees to rent the server and, and have it running. So he came to us. Uh, we bought it 15 years ago. I mean, all in all with buying the site, monthly maintenance on it. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've got over a million dollars invested yeah, in cloudy night since then. It's not and, cheap. and it's been worth it. You know, it, it has just exploded and grown. And it's amazing because all the moderators on there, all volunteers, you know, there's right. not one person on the site that gets a penny for doing what they do. Not they do it out of write something. Right. Yes. So that's, that's, that's important to make it a legitimate uh, review site, you know? So, yep. um, and, and through the years, um, uh, it's been 15 years now. And I think that, isn't it this year is Cloudy Night's 20th anniversary? This year is 20. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is uh, correct. That's a big deal. Um, uh, I would, uh, maybe you know this, uh, but I would say that probably Cloudy Nights is the largest uh, astronomy community site out there. I, I mean, is there any other sure. measure? There's, there's, there's a, there's a, a few others. I mean, certainly sure. some giant Facebook. Um, oh yeah. Uh, groups and um, uh, other groups. You know, I, I, there's individuals that have thirty thousand plus people following them. You have 100%. Reddit, you have, you know, many other groups that are out there. But as far as a standalone group, okay, uh, is there anything any larger? Not that I know of. I mean, we move terabytes of information each month and we don't have a lot of photos. And that's terabytes of just texting and just little text on there. So right. it's, I, I don't, I don't think there is a larger singular community under an umbrella that isn't a larger umbrella like Reddit and Facebook and that sort of thing that that is dedicated to astronomy. Uh, this, this is right. this is it right now, from what I can see. That say. is awesome. That is awesome. Is there any particular leader of of Cloudy Nights? Is there is there someone well, that's at the very top? I know that you're financially supporting the the group. Okay. I. So we we pay for everything. I try to keep hands off because I don't want anyone saying that I cast a decision that meant they can't talk about a certain product or they can't speak their mind the way they want to speak. So I'm I'm hands off. The site is led by a group of admins. There's like nine of them. OK. Right now. Uh so funny, I never really thought about it. It's like a Supreme Court of sorts. Um, so there's okay. there's nine admins, and then there's 60 moderators underneath them. Wow. So the moderators uh, generally handle everything. If they run into an issue, they'll kick it up to the administrators. Administrators will talk about it. I mean, it's not – they. no one wants to rush to judgment to stop something unless it's so blatant that it needs to be stopped with, you know, uh, photographs of inappropriate content and, and language and that sort of thing. Other than that, Which they, they want... happened to you. Oh, I, yes, I, it I has. Know, I know it has. It, yeah. We won't get it, into it, 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 but there was, <laughs> I know there's been some with disastrous effect. So, um, yeah. uh, but uh, you survived that as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, from your perspective, you know, I mean, obviously, any company that's in this industry to have that um, uh, that uh, community out there helping is got to be a, a huge benefit. But I think the Cloud Unites benefits the entire industry. You know, I know it benefits us. I can look at I can look at web traffic coming from Cloudy Nights to us. Um, I know it benefits everyone else. And when I visit suppliers even in uh, Europe and in uh, Asia, um, they talk about cloudy nights. You know, we saw this, it's, it, is, it is where the word of authority comes from, you know, so it's, it is, uh, and that way it's become a very important, uh, you know, uh, a very important entity. And uh, so 
so now you're at, at 20 years with Cloudy Nights. At, at, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what, how are you going to celebrate that? Are you going to celebrate it? Well, we've, we've been kicking around. Um, Guys, we're having a little bit of technical trouble. Let's uh, let's try to get him back here. All right, sorry, a robocall came in and <laughs> disrupted the one time. I don't. I definitely don't want them to come in. Uh, so for the so for the the twenty years, we've been yeah. kicking around uh, doing a a virtual gathering of almost like in like me for, I, I don't even know. It's, I think that we have the footprint and the reach that goes out around the world that will give us the capability to offer an online convention of sorts, right? And get people to live stream their products and hopefully not run into the technical issue. I just ran into, uh, give some one-on-one -on -one information question and answers with people. I, I believe our traffic and our user base, because we have 120,000 some odd registered members, we're posts away from 10 million posts that have been written on the site. So I, I know the, the body is there to enjoy it. And I think it's the next evolution, especially with the social distancing that's having to go on and that it, it'll work. So I'm, I'm looking for fall of this year, you know, September, October, uh, getting everything together. It's obvious it's free. I mean, there's not going to be a charge for everyone to come up there and, uh, and log in and, and see what's going on. But that's, that's the goal. That's the goal this year is to get that done. I see. We have a couple of comments out there. Uh, people said they had lots Lots of people had no idea where to go to watch this. Um, lots of comments. Uh, this guy, Dan is here, found it. I uh, just got here. Ias dropped the ball on this one. Guys, we're sorry. We did announce it on Facebook. Uh, we did give a link right back to our Explore Scientific USA page, and we did send out a uh, uh, mailing to our mailing list uh, saying where it was, so I do apologize for that. Um, but uh, we will share it. Uh, it will be shared also on YouTube and uh, and that kind of thing, so you can watch it. Um, but if you guys have any questions at this point, you know, feel free to ask. So, sure. um, but uh, uh, so so with regards to with regards to cloudy nights. Um, uh, so you did talk about ha having a a um, some sort of celebration or something, but stuff. Mm -hmm. Quite figured out what that's going to be, I guess. Yeah, we the groundwork started to be laid out for it. I'm I'm trying to figure out the easiest way to get it done for people to come in and, and enjoy it. And I, I want to have reasonable speakers that maybe haven't done the circuit before. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting some Cloudy Nights members that have uh, are authoritative in the astrophotography side of it, like maybe doing a tutorial on, on how they process images and, and that sort of thing. So it's just, it's going to happen. It'll happen this year. I don't have a date yet, but the great thing about being virtual, it, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter when the date is because people just have to set uh, in their schedules some time aside instead of getting air flights and hotel and and making a trip they just they're lucky enough to make a trip to their their couch or their chair and and tune in and, and see how it goes mm -hmm. okay so so people are still joining right now uh, we're okay. going to kind of loop back okay uh, that's all right uh, uh, a little bit guys what we did at the very first part of of this uh conversations we talked about the beginnings of astronomics how it got started uh you know mike mike starts uh with his father when he's age seven uh we talked about some of the transitions of that um, of astronomics and uh, when they purchased uh 
uh, cloudy nights. What year was that again? 2004, 2005. Yeah, we started talking about it in 2004, and then it was uh, 2005 was whenever we completed the purchase and then started re-upping the website. And we took Alistair's design, and I happen to love Rodent Track's website, so I had our web developer take the cues from Rodent Track and okay. make it the yellows and the reds, and and that's kind of stuck with the theme from from that point on. So right. So um, and 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 where where we went from there, we talked a little bit about the challenges, uh, the growth of astronomics, uh, going from print uh, to uh, digital, the digital world, um, you know, and, and all, all of us that were in the industry during that time had to go through this. It, it was it was uh, not an easy time. It wasn't an easy time for the uh, magazines either. You know, oh, no. um, we almost lost Sky and Telescope magazine at one point. Um, uh, thankfully, they were purchased by the American Astronomical Society. And uh, so that uh, that added some security that they would still be around. Um, uh, but. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> well, we're. We're also looking at adding uh, through the body collective, since there's so many members doing like Sky and Telescope's hot products, but the sort of uh, awards that the actual users can choose. I will put a poll out. We'll vote on some of the uh, some of the goods that are available. Let the users say this is my favorite eyepiece. This is my whatever the categories end up being, and we can start handing out Cloudy Nights awards. Uh, we did a top product like that oh, 10 years ago, yeah. uh, but it faltered just a little bit. But but I'd like to get back to doing that again. So that way it's not just me choosing what I want to sell. You right. know, it's the it's <laughs> everyone out there choosing what they like. And that's yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the beautiful part about cloudy nights. I mean, it's I could I, I was really torn in adding or placing ads on the website for 12 years. Yeah. And then finally I placed some small ads in the right hand column. I have full control over what goes on. It's not going to be Google just shoving out whatever they want. Um, and it's, it's been accepted, which I thought was, was nice. But now that I've got uh, the exception for people liking that, I think that opening up the awards again is a is a path that people would see as right and just, and it's not me just trying to. I mean, you to guide you basically things. got an an autonomous um, uh, board uh, running the organization. Uh, you know, you, you have, uh, uh, with the exception of maybe uh, profanity, <laughs> right, and people that might get a little out of control. Uh, um, you know, you have freedom of speech on there, uh, freedom for people to make uh, form opinions and say whatever it is. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I think that that's really important uh, for any any community, you know. Uh, um, but, uh, uh, you know, where do you see, you know, where do you, you know, people, a, a lot of people that might be joining us are already familiar with astronomics, maybe a purchase sure. from astronomics in the past. Where, where do you see astronomics going in this next decade? Have you looked that far? I, you know, it, it's funny. I, I used to look out that far. Um, but with my dad passing away in October, I've, I've just been so focused on what's going on right now yeah, that my my future projection isn't really where it needs to be. I my projection and prediction for astronomics. I'm going to start upping inventory on the product lines that we that we bring in our AstroTech line. Yeah, uh, I'm going to continue to put funds into Cloudy Nights and grow it, and hopefully churn out video content, which is kind of the way that I would like to start seeing more, more people are, uh, consuming it that way. I mean, YouTube, everyone looks at oh, YouTube, yeah. you know, why not have videos on site like that? Sure. Uh, I would like to. Now you're talking about the astronomics website itself. 
I'm talking about cloudy nights. Oh, school. cloudy nights. Ast okay. Yeah, astronomics right. as okay. well. But it's okay. You know, because the thing is, I think at some point, and I don't know when that point is, astronomics and cloudy nights are really going to kind of merge into a singular destination of sorts because I mean, I own both of them and I need to, it's almost synonymous at times. It's like, Oh, well it's cloudy nights. Well, it's astronomical. Oh, it's so it, at some point I think they're going to work together. I just don't know how it's going to work together or what's going to happen. And as far as cloudy nights goes, I have looked at doing a premium side of it, small monthly fee, which is going to be a complete add-on from what's on there now, but that fee would be like uh, the magazines, lots of articles, uh, monthly written pieces, video, the whole nine, and not expensive, but just enough to cover my cost to produce the content. Yeah, you know that's that's the deal. We have we have never made money with Cloudy Nights. I don't. We didn't buy it with the sole mindset to make money on cloudy nights. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not telling you I'm some sort of massive philanthropist, but if it can pay for itself, then that's, that's awesome. That would make me a, a very happy person. If I made a, a little tiny sliver on it for improvements to cloudy nights, then that's, sure. that's one better. Sure. Uh, so that's, I don't know. I, well, I cloudy nights is you're going to enter into an area that, uh, I mean, you have opportunities for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that uh, uh, as you work closer with the Cloudy Nights community, there's going you're going to go tread into waters that uh, almost no one else has treaded tread has tread into. You know, sure. Um, uh, you have an autonomous community. Um, uh, you have um, uh, you have a for profit organization selling telescopes. But all of us that are in this business and have been in this business for a long time, you can't be in this business without supporting the community. Right. Because it's the community that supports us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what do we have to do? We, we, uh, and, and we want to do, it's not just we have to do, there, but there's a responsibility to do things like um, we give donations to uh, astronomy events. We support uh, uh, people that are uh, and recognize people for doing exemplary um, uh, work in in the community. Um, uh, the The thing that's kind of cool about Cloudy Nights is it's uh, you know if you're if you have made an important contribution, you're going to see the effects of that immediately. Uh, mm -hmm. People. People chime back in and say, gosh, that was awesome information or thank you for seeing me through. Um, you know, there's people right now posting that they watch uh, 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 Cloudy Nights and or look at Cloudy Nights and use it as a as a resource. Uh, so, you know, I think that if that if the character of that was to ever break, then, you know, Cloudy Nights would lose its worth. OK, sure. Um, uh, so. You know, but uh, to make it so that you can make it better, okay, will cost money, okay? Mm -hmm. There are people, one person chimed in saying, hey, I have no problem paying a yearly fee for that. Uh, right. you know, I, I would too, you know, so, yeah. um, uh, and I think many would. Um, but, uh, you know, who knows well, it, how many new people got started in this hobby because of cloudy sure. nights, you know? And astronomics but, at the same time. So the, making that merger is going to be a an interesting uh, uh, step, you know. And and the merge may never come about. I mean, I just I just have to figure out how to navigate everything, keep as many people happy as possible. Because I get it. Once you're set in a very particular way, when it changes, yeah, then you can kind of freak out. Like when we change to a different format a few years ago on cloudy nights we used a new server that said oh we'll make it great and we'll put all your information in it and it's going to be fantastic uh it cost me personally forty five thousand dollars and it lasted for two weeks and everybody hated it so i we pulled it down went back to the old site 
eight forty five grand. That was an expensive um, two weeks. It, it was an expensive, <laughs> and and we had we had checked it. We'd run it. The moderators and administrators had liked it, and not just because I liked it, yeah, but because they had liked it. There were some programming issues with it, uh, as far as trying to customize it, but they all gave it the green light, and the users got on there, and it was just unabashedly hated. So that disappeared out of pocket and uh, and back to the old uh, but it's been working we've upgraded the servers multiple multiple times and now they're working on cloudy nights version four uh, and you know, everyone just needs to be a little patient the people that are working on it are administrators that are doing it for free because they like it they're volunteers they just yeah they just spend their time and they've got real jobs and and then they work on it on the back end and and it's coming along. I've seen the dev part of it, and it looks nice. It's still a little bit cleaner, so it's, mm -hmm. but it'll be there. Yeah, you see a lot of companies when they're trying to come up with a new format off of the familiar format, and they'll have like a go go to the beta site or whatever. Is that something sure. you think you might do, or uh, is that possible to do? We have the server space to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it would be the old. We're going to turn it on. You can't post on it you can't do because what i don't want to do is have people start posting over there and then not get the information to mesh with one another yeah. uh so that that's a possibility to open up a dev site and and see how that works to a, a group of people but i hate picking a group of people because those 100 people 200 people they're still not the body collective you know it's so i, I don't know i i get a little a little stuck trying to figure out how to do that. I made us bite the bullet and say, turn it on. Blame me. It's turn my it fault. On, let it, let it <laughs> fall. Right. Okay. The buck stops here. Right. We have some questions coming in right now okay. uh, and some comments too. Uh, so okay. let me, let me read uh, uh, some of these comments. Um, uh, you know, guys saying they're a big fan of both of us. Thank you so much. That's great. Appreciate yeah, it. Jason Thank Martin, you. That's awesome. Uh, uh, most of the people first coming in had problems finding us, and so now we have there's there's a number of people watching, so we're we're glad and we're sorry that it was hard to find. Um, we'll fix that in the future. Um, Damien Damien says the Cloudy Nights community has been the singular most important resource for my astronomy journey. I wouldn't have had any idea how to really get started without it. Wow, that's, you know, and it's going to sound cheesy when I say it, but that's. That's what makes it all worthwhile. You know, it's one of those things that, that that's why it's there. You know, I'm yeah. so happy that people find find it and they can connect with the, the user base and they get the information they need. And that's, I mean, that's fantastic. Right. That's right. Great. I'm, um, I'm glad it worked for you, Damien. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Brian Lippincott, my very favorite source to find, buy, sell, trade astronomy, ATM parts, and find information on how to do that. Okay. So... And I just talked to Mr. Lippincott yesterday or the day before on the phone. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that was great. <laughs> That's great. Thanks for thanks for watching, Brian. Um, many people are saying that expanded CN content with a fee would be fine. Uh, um, uh, Damien uh, Damien says any upcoming new developments under the AstroTech line? Anything you want to announce under your uh, AstroTech line? Well, uh, midsummer, <laughs> yeah. allegedly, we'll, we'll see what, what COVID has to say about that. Uh, right. We will have a four inch FCD 100 lanthanum combination refractor that we're going to test the market mm. with a little bit. Mm. Uh, it's just a doublet. You know, it's kind of like in, in the vein of the uh, Takahashi FS 102 sort of thing, just without the fluoride in it. And it'll be around a grand, maybe a tad under it. And that comes with two rings and a handle and, and all this good jazz. Uh, but that's the only interesting upcoming project that we have now. I, if I had unlimited funds, I'd have things come out, you know, every every oh, yeah. two months. We all would. You know? we all would. <laughs> um, but now, you know, my we learned the hard way from bringing the product in originally that it's better for us to try to each year maybe have one or 
two new large items, and that's that's about it, at least from from the staff that I've got and the ability I have here. Um, and I think that it's proven with our ED doublets that it works great. And uh, I don't know, I, I think that the, the new 102 should be nice. It's going to be a good scope. Great, great. Well, it's always exciting. The um, uh, Brian Tucker, he says, is there consideration for opening up partnerships with other astronomy companies to sponsor cloudy nights? Of course, we'd like to keep the advertising minimal as it is today. That would be, well, it, that would be a, a, a tough one right there, I think. Well, I mean, my, my truth to it is I have uh, asked astronomy companies, sent them out uh, prospectus with uh, buying 10% ad blocks over, over the years. Yeah. And I've had only one company show interest in it, and that would be Explore Scientific. Hmm. So, I mean, Scott and Explore Scientific uh, is the only company out of the kits that I've sent out to every major manufacturer. Wow. Um, and I, you know, maybe their ad spend gets spent. So I totally understand that. I mean, yeah. you do your advertising budget, the money gets spent. And if, if you don't have the money, you don't have the money. Just like you don't go out and buy something goofy at home if you just don't have the money for it. So I, I, I get it. Right. Uh, but yes, I, I have offered. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, um, uh, you know, I, I, I totally, I totally get that. Also, from people that go to places where there's like this haven, okay, away sure. from a lot of marketing, okay. Uh, oh, you yeah. know, certainly when I try to go at, to read articles that might interest me or something, just to get bombed with ad after ad is just, it's just annoying, you know. So. Yeah. You know, and, and 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 that takes me to places like Wikipedia or some other places where, you know, but then Wikipedia is, of course, asking me for money, too, you know. Right. But, but that that's OK, you know, and I've supported sure. Wikipedia in the past because I believe in the platform. Um, uh, the, uh, you know, and, and maybe what you have is this this ultra premium tier. OK, sure. where there's no ads at all or something. I don't know. I don't know. There, there well, may be people that want that. Or maybe the only ads in there are how to use things. Well, and, right? and what, it, I don't you know. know, what's going on right now with the ads, it's only astronomics ads. And if a Cloudy Nights member buys from us, yeah, they get a discount for being a Cloudy Nights member. That's a good deal. You know, and you sell and, everything, and, so... Right? Yeah, I, I try. I, I can't say that I said I like to say that I know everything, but I just I don't. <laughs> and so there are some products I don't carry because I just I'm not going to lie and pretend I'm an expert about them. Uh, but I try to add as best as I can to the to the site. This is uh, Mike Overacker says support for astronomy outreach programs is saved for those who post the most on social media, not the quiet people that just do the job. Um, not sure support for astronomy outreach programs is saved for those who post the most on social media, not the quiet people who just do the job. Uh, yeah, Mike, I mean, part of, part of um, uh, astronomy outreach certainly, you know, and I love to do this too. I, I, I do love going out on a street corner when I feel like the whole world is is kind of messed up. One of the things that makes the whole world make sense to me again is going to do astronomy outreach and doing sidewalk astronomy. And I just, I don't announce it. I don't, I don't really particularly do anything. I just go out there and I do it and I love it. And I love showing people their first views of Saturn or the moon or whatever and uh, helping them find this connection, okay, back, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm out there to kind of heal myself too. Um, but, um, uh, the other part of astronomy outreach is letting people know. And, and so that's the reason why you see us on social media. It's not so self-serving, um, because we could be spending our time doing something else like 
you know, spending time with our families, for example. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, but uh, being, being on social media and waving the flag and calling attention to this uh, helps people, not just within our own, like in the United States, but helps people all over the world. I, I interact with people that are in underprivileged countries, uh, third world countries, people that don't have two dimes to rub together, you know, that are interested in astronomy, that are interested in science and really want to better their lives. And, and so that's, that's what, that's what the whole purpose of astronomy outreach is all about. So I would say cloudy nights is also an outreach platform. Absolutely. It's just a different method. I mean, because and on, on every level, on every level. Yeah, I mean, you, you write something, you're talking to people, new people are coming in on it. So you don't even have to be out, you know, puffing your chest up and, and banging on it and saying, look at me, look at me. You're just, this was my first telescope. What am I doing wrong? And then you'll get 20 people in there with an answer. And that's, that's outreach. The person reached out, they yep. got their answer, and, you know, and that's, it's just a different level. It's a different type. Yeah. It's like being in a big club where, you know, you're there and, and you've got a, there's a guru there, you know, that can mm -hmm. hold your hand a little bit, take you under, under their wing and show you how to set your camera, how to make a precision polar alignment or how to optimize the drivetrain in your, in your mount or whatever it is, you know, how to, sure. you know, the, you know, get that precision collimation. So, uh, and that's been done a zillion times over on cloudy nights. Jason Martin says he'd like to see an AstroTech or ES version of the triad ultra quad band filters, preferable, preferably be below the $1,000 price point. Uh, the challenge is, is that making that stuff, okay, uh, the process of getting to the point of where you have filters that perform to that level uh, is, is a big deal. I, I have personal experience with it. Uh, when I was at Mead Instruments, John Diebel came to me and said, Scott, I want you to design new narrowband uh, or, or uh, nebular filters for Mead Instruments. We have our old ones. I, it's time to have new ones. And I said, that's great. I know about the coding process that much. You know, I'm not a <laughs> physicist. Um, so I had to do a lot of homework about, uh, you know, bandpass, light pollution, all the rest of it. And I spent about three months studying it. And then I got to work with a scientist and we did start to make the filters. The filter run itself to get to filters that we wanted uh, was about a four month process where we made filters, you do a run, uh, you go out and you, you test them, not only with a uh, transmission spectra, I can't even pronounce it, transmission spectral uh, measuring machine, uh, but actual real world cases, you know, where you're out there under the sky in different conditions and seeing how these things perform. So it's an expensive process. Once you put all that engineering in, now you're trying to hit the market with, prices that people can afford. And that's always been the balance. And Mike, you know this oh, yes. very well now, okay, because you're in manufacturing, uh, the balance of trying to offer technology that Perk and Elmer would charge you six figures for, you know, for four figures or, you know, a few hundred dollars, you know, so, uh, and we're, we're in an industry that's actually very small. And then production run and, and everything else. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a balancing act. And I'm glad people have have set the money aside to bring those kind of filters out. But unfortunately, sometimes it's just a it's just the cost. I mean, that's just how much it is. And uh, yeah, and we we will never get for the most part um, to scale on some of these to make the price reasonable uh in this in this specialty side of it that's so. right in the specialty side of it uh uh we are we are supporting thousands maybe maybe a couple of hundred thousand uh actor sure. people okay um and uh you know so we never get to the scale of making millions of anything you know and you have also a highly competitive market so each one of the companies has their share of this or that. So um, there are very few uh, telescope industry millionaires. <laughs> yeah. 
That is most, true. <laughs> most of us, me included, okay, uh, do this for the love of it. And, um, uh, you know, so I guess I could have made more money selling washing machines. Not near as interesting, right? So, no. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a clean business. So that's it is right. a clean business. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Okay. So uh, Gary Gibson, uh, if there wasn't any new content, a, a free, in my honest opinion, uh, would be okay. A fee would be okay. Okay, he's talking about Cloudy Nights fee. Uh, sure. AM has a fee, but CN is so much more than them. Well, and and my my counter to that is that guy hates. I just sound like I'm going to sound like I'm doing a, a Jerry Lewis telethon. There's a donate button on the website. That's so right. it in, you in the right it. support it. That's right. Yeah, right right hand side. There's and it says you know you are not obligated to support it by any stretch. If you want to, great. If you don't want to, no problem. Stay and enjoy. And I I would hate to sit there and tell some 11 year old kid you can't see the website because you need to pay me five dollars to read the information no, that's very true yeah. you know and that's or you know people out in all around the world i just don't want to disrupt disrupt it for the money and uh, i like money everyone likes money and, and i would love to be able to make the website uh better but i'm not i just don't feel right charging for yeah, yeah. community information. But, but but it's obvious that Cloudy Nights doesn't bring in the kind of donations that supports itself, okay? So, sure. and without without astronomics, it wouldn't exist at all, okay? Well, it might exist, but it, it would be something much smaller and, and not as vibrant as it is. So you've done a, as a service to our industry and to this community, You've done a, a great job, and you you deserve an Oscar for it. So you know that oh. that and and so you know there's the the gentleman that said you know the uh, talking about the guys on social media doing outreach versus quietly doing it on a street corner. Uh, you've been doing this quietly on a street corner, okay? You've been supporting it uh, to the tune of seven figures now. Um, uh, so that's that is uh, you know. I think everybody on Cloudy Nights uh, owes you, a, uh, you know, uh, gratitude, you know, so. Well, and I owe them the gratitude. I always say Cloudy Nights doesn't exist without them anyway. I mean, it the site is only as good as the people that, that write the information on it and read it and share it. So it's a it's definitely a two way street. I, I appreciate that they're there and and I hope they uh accept the contributions that that we've made to to make it what it is but my my contribution is minor i mean it's while it's money the knowledge out there that that they've shared is way superior yeah. to the tech that i write every month to make sure the, the yeah. site's still running right right uh rita burris ellis thanks to both of your companies for continuing to offer a quality product at the lower price points doublets for instance Thank you, Rita. You know. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Craig Bobchin, uh, as an owner of an astronomy outreach company, I agree that the reaction to someone looking through a telescope for the first time is very satisfying. Absolutely, that's that's mm -hmm. the use. Tim Robertson, I have used Cloudy Nights to find various guests for the Observer's Notebook podcast. Great resource. That's awesome. That's great. And and we're supposed to do a podcast with Tim at some point. The timing has been absolutely terrible with everything, oh. and I feel bad sitting there saying, "Well, I can't do it now. I can't do it now." But Tim, it's going to happen. It will. So we'll we'll get it together here. I'm have Tim on this show, you know. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we could talk about uh, about your podcast. Uh, Cody, cloudy nights slash astronomics are both great, and ES is too. I love my Comet Hunter. Question for Scott. There has been rumor that the Comet Hunter has been discontinued. Can you address that at all? You should also develop an 8-inch Mac new version to be sold specifically with astronomics. Well, the, you know, I, I, I'll grind Mike here at the end of the <laughs> clock. <laughs> so hit a minimum order quantity and we'll build it. <laughs> Um, the, the, the Comet Hunter, uh, was, uh, has been something that's been with, uh, Explore Scientific almost since we started the company. Um, it was, uh, 
beyond the refractors we initially came out with and the first eyepieces we came out with, uh, I approached David Levy uh, to collaborate, do a collaborative effort to design a new telescope. Uh, the Comet Hunter uh, has been at various times a sleeper. Recently, over this, especially this last year, it has sold really well. The reason why it's sold really well is that we have hit the end of our production. It's, it's hit its end of life, okay? Um, this happens every time that a manufacturer decides to end the life of a product, okay? Uh, it happened with Mead Instruments with, you remember the LX3, Mike? Oh, yes. Okay, oh, so yeah. I first integrated electronic system. John Diebel tried to kill the LX3 several times uh, and people kept buying it, okay? Uh, we are at a we're at a point right now with the Comet Hunter whether you know I have to decide to do a redesign of the Comet Hunter or um, or perhaps add a new one to the line. We could make an eight inch model. We've talked about it. It would be heavy, you know. It'd be yeah. heavy. The uh, carbon fiber wall would have to be thicker. All the rest of it. A big eight inch corrector plate is is quite heavy you know so um but uh, uh not an impossibility uh but the uh, the original comet hunter as it is is still going to towards its end of life uh uh scenario um uh and uh you know but there's always a chance to bring it back with a slight tweak of of design so that's what i'll say for right now um Howard Fine will explore scientific consider introducing GoTo Tracker, the bigger trust tube Dob line. Uh, yes, we will consider that. You know, there's the, the, those are things that we're talking about at this at this time. So probably something that would retrofit older models and models that would have it. So that's sure. something you can think about. Michael Covington, thanks for joining. You nailed it. Amateur astronomy is uh, is about doing for a thousand dollars what anybody can do for a hundred thousand. That is true. <laughs> and this business is not for the faint of heart. Okay, I will tell you that right now. So, um, Jason Martin. So, in your opinion, is 1075 asking price a fair ask? Uh, oh, he's, he's still talking about the filters. Michael Covington, for the filter, I can't really say. There is the question of what it costs to make it and also what we are willing to pay. And if the two don't meet, you won't get them. That's true. That's that's business 101. Mm -hmm. um, Jamie Crona, I donate the same to Cloudy Nights every time I donate to AM. CN is so much more. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Cloudy Nights appreciates it. So yeah. Uh, Jay Williams wants to know what's the average number of visits cl to Cloudy Nights every month. You probably know that number. It approximately. Okay, so. Our, I, I misspoke earlier. We have 300 million page views a year, and we receive wow. roughly 20 million visitors a month. I had the page views and visitors tied up in my head. So it's, it's 20 million visitors a month is what it comes out Unique to be. Unique visitors. Yeah, unique visitors and wow. over 300 million page views at this point. The average amount of time people spends on cloudy nights uh, per session is eight minutes and 37 seconds. Long so long. that's a very long for a website. That is a long, long time. time. That's right. Um, so and with Corona coming up, our uh, visitors are up 35 percent so far since uh, March. So I mean, people are staying home, they're reading, they're learning more about astronomy, they're coming to cloudy nights, and they've st stabilized off. So that, I mean, I don't know if this is going to be our new normal, and people are getting back into the hobby even more and more, if it's going to drop back down uh, to where it was uh, in January. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. Okay. All right. Well, I know you're getting phone calls there. You're actually, we're, we're doing this in the middle of business hours. <laughs> That's all right. You know, I'm the only person here right now. I sent everyone else I know else you're home. doing everything. So, so uh, yeah. let's talk just a little bit about this coronavirus uh, sure. situation. I mean, uh, the way that it impacted us, we're in Arkansas, you're in Oklahoma. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think Oklahoma had a little bit 
tougher lockdown than we did here in Arkansas. Um, uh, with with Arkansas, it was kind of uh, lockdown light. Okay, they right. they closed the restaurants, the movie theaters, the gyms. Uh, that's that's. I, I now need to work off some <laughs> some <laughs> belly here. Um, uh, we we shrunk down. We never stopped shipping. We kept a skeleton crew. Sure. For shipping, uh, uh, it did impact how fast we could ship. Okay, mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, we also had impact because of coronavirus in China getting uh, merchandise in. You know, but oh, we yes. had we had merchandise. Um, uh, we always we always bring in a lot of stuff right after the first of the year, and so we got that inventory. Um, the um, and, and our customer service people work from home. Uh, our engineers work from home. Uh, I was in the office every day. You know, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. almost here seven days a week. So, um, but uh, I got a phone call from uh, one of my friends that said, "Did you know that Mike is running Astronomics by himself? You know, he's he's answering the phones. He's doing the customer service. He's he's packing shipping." receiving everything <laughs> that was cool. yep. how how do you yeah. do that i just uh so my mother who i go and i try to see every day she's yeah. uh, in her 80s so she is very concerned about corona so whenever that came out out of uh, my love for her yeah i sent everybody home march 17th and I've been paying them, and that was before the PPP loans were out. So I'm yeah, still cutting paychecks. Yeah, you didn't follow checks. anybody. You didn't fire no. anyone. Nothing, they're, right? they're at home, sending them their paychecks in the mail. Yeah. Everything's good. Uh, the problem with sending everybody home is that it sometimes delays me answering the phone. I yeah. can't get all the phone calls. I can't answer all the emails on time the way I want to answer it. Of course not. Um, I'm still trying to get things out same day and I'm about a 50, 50 shot at getting things out same day. Oh, that's remarkable. You know, my wife and my two young teenagers have been in here helping me little by little the past, okay. the past week or so. Okay. So if anyone calls up and they get a, uh, a younger sounding voice, bear with them. They will, yeah, <laughs> they, they will figure it out. Sounding voice at one time. For <laughs> yeah. So, and, and they'll, they'll get me to you at some point. Yeah. But other than that, I'm hoping to have people fully staffed here June 1st. Yeah. And by fully staffed, I mean, I'll have someone helping me here answer the phones. I'll probably still be doing the packing because I don't want to get into the potential second wave issues. I want to see what, yeah. what happens with the reopening. Right. So, um, but yeah, no, it's. I think I've got a lot more gray hair in my my beard <laughs> than I've got. Um, it, yeah, but it's most of this up on top it. is still dark, so yeah. that's good. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> most of it, yeah, and it's still there. I haven't pulled it all out yet, so right. I haven't had a haircut in a few months, so it's looking a little shaggy, but yeah. that's all right. That's right. Well, uh, so that you know, eventually we'll all climb out of this. Yeah. Uh, we're we have more people working here now, but you still, I mean, everybody's wearing the face masks, and sure. we're all still washing our hands like crazy, and you know, so that's uh, and maybe that's something we have to keep doing for a long time. You know. Well, and that was my deal. If I'm the only person here. And I know that I don't have it. I've had the test. I don't have it. I don't go out and see anybody when I go home. My kids aren't going out to see anybody. Right. So I feel that I am cocooned in here safely enough where I can get packages out to people. And I don't feel bad about sending, like I'm not concerned about sending a virus with the telescope as a gift. Sometimes I haven't been putting invoices in because I don't want to touch everything and continue to shove it inside the box. I pack with gloves on. I mean, I've yep. got disposable gloves that I'm going through. So it's, yeah, it, it's crazy. And I still clean every time, even though it's just been me in here. So I, people may think I'm insane spraying Lysol and wiping things down, but when it's well, just me, but that's, that's just what has to be done right take now. The precaution that's good. You know, it doesn't sure. cost much. And, and, uh, so, and maybe it's keeping you from getting the regular flu and other colds and stuff like that so sure 
A guy named Dan Parker comment on the community aspect of Cloudy Nights. Jim Barnett and I met on Cloudy Nights in 2006 and formed a local anti-club club, <laughs> the Off Fisher Lane Irregulars. Okay. Yeah, I like those rebellious <laughs> types. There you go. Some of us have moved, but the club still meets. Uh, still moving to Idaho. I've met several locals who are interested in getting together in a non-club type environment for just the joy of observing. Thank you for making all this happen. So, so you brought... So that's that's the story of Cloudy Nights, right? See, that, you know? That's that's the outreach part of it. That's, that's the right. people connecting that they would never have connected. It wouldn't have happened, right? And who knows? Uh, and you 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 talk a lot about young people getting started and stuff like that. You know, you want to bring them to a reliable, safe environment mm -hmm. to do that. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, regarding the effect of this is Michael Covington. Regarding the effect of COVID on our economy, I think both of you are ahead of the game by being in Oklahoma and Arkansas, away from the larger cities. America is going to become more spread out. Could be. Could be. Well, as long as it doesn't create more light pollution, then we're all happy, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> we get full shielding on everything. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, let's see. Um, Mike Overacker. By the way, just so you know, Scott, I do appreciate your support and help of my astronomy mobile outreach program. I use the ES80 carbon fiber refractor I bought on cloudy nights all the time in the programs. The parts you replace has kept it going. Mike, we will continue to support you. So thank you very much. Well, see, and that's something else that I don't know a lot of people. At, you know, we have a classified section on that that I think it has like 1,500 ads on it. It's some that's crazy amount of ads. Just keep adding a hundred. Yeah, if you 50, can't afford to buy a brand new something, you know, I mean, sure. all of us like to get new stuff, but uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the thing that's good about amateur astronomers is that they often take excellent care of their equipment. You know, yes, this was something that they dreamed about, wanted. You know, they're they're going to baby it. They're going to take care of it, and when they sell it used because they're buying the next thing, you know, they. You're not going to find something that's trashed in general. Correct. Okay, you're going to find that's something correct. that's almost better than than uh, than what you would expect. You know, so. it's as it's as pristine as a used piece of equipment can get usually, especially the optical tubes. Mounts can take a little bit of a beating because they're throwing around more. Yeah, you know, like tripods, tripods but they, the mount heads and the telescopes are usually perfect shape. Yeah, and usually even if it's a mount, uh, it could be disassembled cleaned up realigned mm -hmm. you know and it'll you know it'll work so you yes, can get it down to your grandkids you know so yes, sir. that's that's for the most part electronics uh can sometimes be a problem but uh but there's there's solutions for that too uh let's see um let's see and then michael smith sorry mike i have a question for scott Oh, Sorry, Mike. Go ahead. A question for That's Scott. all right. <laughs> no problem. It's Scott's show. I understand Explore Scientific was not found in Arkansas. What was the what was the draw for the move to Springdale, a rel relatively small town? I will tell you, um, I had a sale. Explore Scientific started to branch out into other areas. We sell sports optics. We sell science STEM toys. We now sell play tents. Okay. Um, we, we, there's a lot of different things that we do. Um, and, uh, you know, so, but the, the main thing about our company is that, uh, uh, it's in our name, explore scientific. So we encourage people to explore and that starts when you're a child, you have to have toys for children. Okay. That exploratory type of, uh, uh, toys that would work out. Uh, one of those one of those things that I'm really proud to say that we have is the Galileo scope. You know, so that's that's been a great one. Um, we have, uh, but uh, the reason why I moved out here to answer your question is I had a sales rep out here that I really wanted to work with much closer, wanted to make him part of the company, and we did do that. His name is Robert Price, and um, uh, he lives in Fayetteville, and so I was making lots of trips back and forth. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that in 1968, I'm I'm from Texas, born in Texas. Sorry, Mike. All right. <laughs> you know, Texas and Oklahoma have a rivalry. 
That's right, because I know where your family lives now, so that's no problem. Oh, that's true. They do live in Oklahoma now. That's right. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's what does that say? It says a lot. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, but I came back out, and uh, gosh, it was so beautiful here, and I noticed that gasoline was a dollar a gallon less than California. I start the business in California. Um, I, my kids and all the rest of my family is, is uh, you know, aside from my, my dad and my, my sisters, they live in Oklahoma. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, I love California for so many reasons. Uh, it's a beautiful state, but the cost of doing business there is so high. And so when we came out to make the move to Arkansas, uh, that's when I was able to really expand. You know, so that that's why we're here. We're in the middle of the United States, like astronomics is, um, and uh, that makes it easier to get product to either coast. Um, it's a shorter shipping time, uh, cost overhead, just overall are, are much much less. So, um, you know, and to with, withstand the storms that we, Mike and I didn't talk about the storms that happened, but Mike did <laughs> talk about it earlier before we went on air. Um, which was uh, uh, Halley's Comet, or maybe we did talk about it on the ale. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, but that yeah. was a bad storm. We take this incredible ride up, okay? You're selling telescopes like crazy, all astronomical gear like crazy. The Mars opposition was like Yeah, the crazy. Mars was another right. big one. And another big one was the 2017 total eclipse. Yes. The insane one, okay? But what happens on the other side of this to businesses that are in our industry is they sell, 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 and then on the other side, it is a free fall. You can't sell anything. So if you can't be in business, okay, and, and not, you know, withstand the fall, okay, um, that happens. It's a very volatile business. I'd say don't do it. Don't get involved, okay, because it's it gets, it can be ugly, Um in the case of companies like Mead Instruments, on during those falls, we had to have massive layoffs, and and uh, you know you're affecting people's lives and stuff. So, Astronomics has always kept uh, its infrastructure small uh, but powerful. So everybody there multitasks. I mean, you got Mike there doing everything right now. Um, uh, in my company, you'll see me sometimes loading or unloading trucks. I mean, I we don't have ivory towers, okay. Sure. Uh, that we're sitting in. So that's that's the deal. But that's why we're in Springdale. Uh, Don Davies. Don, uh, nice to hear from you. Uh, question for both. What are the demographics of your audience, cust uh, the customers, and do you see those analytics changing at, as the interest in space science increases? Uh, the Dragon launches, the Artemis, J West. Are you both are, what are both of your companies doing to attract, engage, and educate a younger audience, younger astronomers? You know, and that's a problem that we face from the entire industry. I, I think the most common question that I get is, do you have a camera that we can hook up to the back of the telescope that will stream the image to my iPad? And that's what the younger audience is really wanting. They're wanting to hang out, get a telescope outside, let it do its thing, and then watch it on their device, phone, iPad. Now, I'm not going to say all of them, but a massive majority of them is pointing towards that direction. And a couple of companies have tried to address that. Yeah. Uh, $4,000, though, to I get like, it addressed I mean, for like an 80 millimeter. Color, I think um, and, um, there was another one. They're expensive. Yeah, they, and they are expensive. And the telescope part of it isn't anything fantastic. It's all the technology in there that, that brings the price to the premium that it that it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so until the companies do that, it's going to continue to be a grain of the hobby. Now, I will say DSLR imaging has helped skew it to a younger that's age group because you're not stuck in a CCD camera or film. Mm -hmm. And now iPhones and their... Oh ridiculously yeah. good camera in it. I did a show with Mike Wiesner on iPhone astrophotography mm -hmm. and it was pretty amazing. Um, I, you know, from my perspective, what I see is um, uh, because I've sold a lot 
in mass market, okay? Uh, and uh, by the way, this is, this is my first telescope. I keep it on my desk. You'll notice that it has a Kmart tag on it, okay? <laughs> this telescope is really from 1970. This is my first telescope, okay? And I keep it on my desk as a, as a constant reminder. There we go. We'll just leave it over there. As a constant reminder of where I started, okay? So that little 40-millimeter uh, aperture telescope with a draw tube zoom eyepiece and a not a real finder scope, and this is a, <laughs> this is by all standards what uh, people would call a Christmas trash telescope, okay? Like we call it in the hobby. Sure. Um, but I got my first view of the moon with it. Uh, here I am, you know, selling telescopes every day. Um, so what we, what we see is, that kids get interested in science and astronomy at a really young age, three, four, five years old. I mean, you get that little audience, they are intensely interested, okay? And they can gobble up information very quickly. It's not uncommon for me to do an outreach event and have a six-year-old or seven-year-old who understands uh, you know, uh, the HR diagram of stars, they understand the dynamics of some of the latest findings that are going out there, you know. They hit about 12 years old and now things start getting social for them. And things, hobbies like astronomy, if they had this hobby, okay, kind of go by the wayside a little bit. They go through junior high, uh, they go through high school um, and, uh, you know, with all the activities of high school. And then they go to college and they may be reintroduced to astronomy at this time because the college or the university has an observatory. Uh, they meet people that are astronomers and this kind of thing, but they can't afford it. OK, they can't afford to get involved. Then they start their careers. Then they get married. OK, maybe they make a little bit more money and they can start to get involved with it. These are the guys. This is the younger generation of people that have DSLRs. And they've discovered that they can do astrophotography, and it's a very cool thing. Social media has helped a lot here, okay? Very true. Those guys on Instagram that have 30, 40, 50,000 followers, okay, and they're pumping out better and better images because they're being driven to improve their processing and captures as they're doing them. Uh, uh, but uh, And then, then we start at 45. I, I, th these are the guys that have the observatories that buy the – the expensive stuff because they have, they have the inclination, they have the time, they have the money. Okay. And th that's, that's where it is. So like Galileo, Galileo started when he was 45. Okay. He lives until I think he's 80 years old. All right. But uh, yeah, he's the guy that did the first astronomy outreach. He did, you know, he, he made some of the first big improvements in telescopes. And so uh, he, he's a good model for us as far as a customer. Um, but, uh, uh, but I think that the growing part of this is, has to do with astrophotography. I would, I would agree with Mike on this. Uh, you know, if there is a point where there is a more or less instant gravi gratification instrument that can sell for a few hundred dollars that will do what Mike described. Okay. I think that that would open up a, a big segment of this of this hobby for sure but uh, up until the point that you can give uh, 20 and 30 year olds a few thousand extra dollars to go spend on their hobbies okay uh, that's it's not because they don't want to um, it's because it, it, it is uh, there's a price to be had for it although it's cheaper than it ever was um, that was kind of long-winded uh, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Uh, Brian Lippincott, imagine the sales of solar scopes, binos, and cameras and other solar gear with the upcoming 2024 eclipse. It's going to be insane. Let's underline the word insane, okay, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> All of the people that were involved in the 2017 eclipse uh, wanted to go hide in a bunker somewhere afterwards, okay, because it was insanity. 
Um, all of us sold tons of eclipse glasses and stuff, but the rush on eclipse glasses happens. How far out do you think it happens? Even though the eclipse is, we already know there's the 2024 eclipse. When do you think they're going to start buying their eclipse glasses? A week before the eclipse. A week is before. <laughs> <laughs> a week before. And who are they going to go to? They're going to go to reputable companies. Okay. Uh, right. Amazon refunded $60 million in eclipse glasses because there were some unscrupulous people that muddied the water. Okay. With unsafe solar glasses. You want to buy ISO safe stuff. Okay. It's your eyesight that we're talking about. And uh, Brian Lippincott said one day before. That's true. Um, <laughs> but people do things at the last second. And sure. in our world today, our Amazon next day delivery kind of world, you think that you can buy things at any time and get stuff right away. Okay. This is not true. Okay. This is not true. So if yes. you're interested in the eclipse, I, I would say go ahead and start buying your solar equipment. Okay. Start learning how to use it. Um, you know, become an expert at it. Come the, the uh, there's the 2024 eclipse, but there's the, the 2023 eclipse. There's an eclipse happening in December in Chile. You know, if you were brave enough to get on an airplane and go down there, um, there's eclipses all the time, and they're amazing. You know, so. But don't wait till the last second to no. do things. You know. No. <clears throat> um. Uh, Jackson Taylor wants to know if he can get a uh, job with you or, or me at this point. What kind of career opportunities are there? <laughs> uh, Jackson, if you are really uh, have the, uh, uh, the gumption to get involved in this, uh, it's not so hard to, to get involved, but uh, uh, beware of what you ask for. Okay. <laughs> this is a right. tough business. This is a tough business. Um, uh, if it's something that you love and you are uh, also polished enough to sell and and uh, know how to behave in uh, in a business environment, um, then then you can be part of it. You know, it's and that's that's the kind of people we always look for. Yeah, right now I've got uh, my father-in-law works for me. When he he retired as an attorney and he was looking for something to do, okay. so I'm like, all right. Come, Come on, on in, in-house in counsel. So, uh, so he came well, and worked nice for me. Someone that, that's a lawyer, right? So. And yeah, and then Pete. I mean, you've known Pete forever. I mean, the old, oh, yeah. old track coach. I mean, and he's, he's been doing my sister. Yeah, yeah, and he's been building telescopes for I, forty years, fifty, uh, some absurd amount of time. I mean, so he's about as knowledgeable as you can find he's on the Dobsonian side. I mean, he's and great. such a nice guy too. I really like Pete. So all, yeah. of, all of your team, man, you've got great people working for you. So now you can't say that too loud because when they hear it, they're going to ask for a raise. And they all Come deserve a raise. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all of our team deserves a raise too. They'll come. There you go. It'll all happen. But there you go. Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, we have gone on for about an hour and 20 minutes. Is there, is there anything, uh, Mike, that you want to, to say anything that you want to mention any announcements I mean, about cloudy nights or astronomics or I, I appreciate the fact that I am still able to currently run a business that my father started 41 years ago and people liked the information he would put out and thought of us well enough to buy telescopes from a middle of nowhere Oklahoma town, really. I mean, you know, the only pe reason people know of Norman is when the Sooners roll in and start rolling over their football teams right. Uh, right. on occasion. Sometimes we get it handed to us, too, but that's all right. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that people use cloudy nights and have made it as big as it is. I mean, I, you know, everything in my life is because other people thought that an idea my dad had was great yeah. and thought that an idea that I was forward thinking enough to acquire was great. And I appreciate that. And that's, yeah. you know, that that's just, I appreciate everyone and their support over the years. Something I will say, I mean, really uh, very honestly, without being tongue in cheek or whatever, uh, 
uh, there's lots of businesses where a son has been involved in that business, um, not just in the astronomy business, but all kinds of businesses. Sure. Most of the time, it, it is a it, it's a free ride for them. OK, the, their dad has built something uh, and they're riding the coattails of that. Mike, you you have you have adopted and and formed the character and DNA of what astronomics is. Uh, you're respected in the industry, um, you know, and uh, you you took astronomics to places that I think your father left to his own devices might not have done. And so that's, uh, um, you know, I, I really take my hat off to you. Um, I think that the, uh, the, the character, I mean, the stewardship that you have, you know, you hold the customer dear, you, uh, uh, you know, you weather the storms, you, you've done all of this and you've done a great job, you know, so that's, I, I'm, you know, well, I, I appreciate that. And my dad has left a very long shadow that I'm <laughs> I'm trying to uh, to still stay under the protection of yet step out yeah, just there's a little, little bit, you know, got off, Mike. So, so, you know, you got your own. So um, uh, we are uh, as I wrap up here, um, uh, we do tonight have a imaging session with Jack Newton. If you guys would like to come back and sit in on that, that's going to be at 11 o'clock central. The reason why it's so late is because he's he's operating out of his home in uh, Osoyoos, Canada. OK, his observatory is in Portal, Arizona. OK, he's got a remote observatory down there, probably with gear that he's bought from astronomics. Uh, he, we only hope. <laughs> yeah, we <would> hope. Uh, <laughs> he is going to, and, and it doesn't get dark till about nine o'clock down there. Okay, which it makes it eleven here and midnight in on the east coast. So I will be, I will be um, uh, here with you. Um, uh, you guys are all invited to come ask questions of Jack Newton as you'd like to. Uh, he's really one of the masters of astrophotography, uh, one of the pioneers of color CCD. Amateur astrophotography, so it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, all right. Good. So thanks everyone, and uh, we'll see you on the next show. Take care. All right, thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. All right, thank you, Scott.